My name is Elizabeth Brim, and I am an artist blacksmith. I use ancient tradition, traditional um, techniques of blacksmithing to make sculptures that are unexpected to be made out of metal. For instance, I made the first uh, sculpture that I made that was in my feminine series was a pair of steel high heel shoes. I make pillows out of steel and I make, um, I have a body of work that is uh, feminine clothing. I am inspired to make things by, I think the main thing that inspires me is the way I was brought up. Um, my mother is a very proper Southern lady who was, um, very disappointed when I told her I was going to start taking a blacksmithing class. I'd signed up for my first blacksmithing class at Penland. And when I told her that, she said, Elizabeth, I do not approve. That is not a ladylike thing to do. So a friend of mine, Tom McCarthy, who's a jeweler, told me, he said, I just wear a string of pearls and you'll be ladylike. So that's why I wear my pearls. <laughs> And people ask me nowadays if my mother still feels that way, but no, she's very, very proud of me. <laughs> so that makes me happy. Um, but my mother and my grandmother sewed dresses for me and my sister, fancy dresses with lace and tucks and smocking, and um, they were meticulous um, seamstresses and craftspeople. And so I was inspired by them to make these um, clothing things that I made. And I said that the first feminine piece that I made was some steel high heel shoes. Well, the second um, sculpture that I made in my feminine series was an apron. And um, that was in 1987. And this apron I made in um, 20, 19. So the aprons are a thing or a thing theme that I've been make I've been making for many years and I've made a lot of variations on them. So uh, this one is stainless steel mesh. You can see it's movable. I'm so proud of this thing. Um, I make my work in my studio in Penland, North Carolina. And if you're familiar with the, with the Penland area, I'm really close to the Penland Post Office, so I always say I'm in downtown Penland. And, um, and I have pretty much everything I need in my, in my studio. I don't have a lot of fancy tools, but I have what I need to make the things that I want to make. Um, you can find my work or see my work at the um, North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh. I have a piece, it's a tiara sitting on a pillow and it has some glass in it and it is in the Mint, at the Mint Museum in Charlotte. I have another pillow at the Metal Museum in Memphis, Tennessee. And the Penland School has a few pieces of mine around. Um, I made a camisole with a sign that says Pearl's Kitchen that is, but is at the Penland Kitchen. And um, what else did I make at the Penland School? Oh, there's a pillow in the office of, of the Penland School. The Penland School every year designates some artist as the outstanding artist educator. And years ago, they commissioned me to make a pillow and it's got tassels hanging off of it. And every year, the person who gets that award is engraved on that pillow. So it's getting to be pretty neat textured over it now with all the names engraved over it. Um, in downtown Spruce Pine, I have a tree 
that I'm very, very proud of. It's right next to a clock that's downtown. And there are hundreds and hundreds of little white flowers on that um, tree. And it was a public art commission. And in Spartanburg, South Carolina, I have another public art commission that is um, in a Morgan Park in Spartanburg. And it's a little love seat with a flounce skirt and it has a bustle on the back of it. <laughs> um, and this isn't there yet, but I can show you the drawing of the thing that um, is going to be in Burnsville, North Carolina. So this, this, is my, this is the expanded version of the drawing that I made. It's gonna be cut out. I'm not gonna make it myself, but it's going to be cut out with a, um, a laser cutter, and then it's gonna be powder coated. And so this, this is seven feet tall here, and these pieces are gonna be 14 feet tall when they're finished. And they're gonna be on the main drag in Burnsville, North Carolina. So I'm excited about seeing those. The last time Firefest had a, a in-person event, I was there and Michael Sherrill had made the big sculpture. And, um, and I was told that he made one and then it exploded in the bisque kiln and was destroyed. And um, they said they called him up and told him that it was destroyed and he said, well, um, let me call you back in a few minutes. And then he called back and he said, I'm coming back to rebuild the thing. So he actually made two of those. And the second one, um, when they were firing it and they opened the big lotus kiln and there that thing was burning and flames shooting out of the little holes and somebody in the audience said, it's a flaming pineapple. And <laughs> Then I could see Michael across the way and his, his face was lit by the fire and he was throwing oxides into the blower to make the flames turn different colors. And he was just smiling. <laughs> and I thought, well, he really deserves to be this happy and have this much fun. And everybody else did too. That was just incredible. Starworks, the place, is a very accessible place for people to learn. And Firefest, the event, is a very accessible to people and a lot of people come there just to enjoy the day or the two days. And, um, and people come there for fun, but they also learn while they're there. And people become exposed to artists and like blacksmiths and um, iron casters and people who work with clay and glass blowers and um, they're they meet those people in person and able to get to talk to them and um, and then see some of the lectures that people do and talk about their work and it's very educational at the same time it is a super lot of fun um, so that's what is important that's what I think is so important about Starworks is they're so accessible <laughs>